Lucy, what are the three models of the real estate industry and what, how do they differ between the UK and Dubai? Talk to me. Okay, so there's basically three models. You've got the dependent model. That's your typical high street agency like your Foxtons, your Savills, your Knight Frank. Um, where it's the traditional employed traditional, agent. Traditional, yeah. Yep. So your employee, you're probably on a salary if you're here in the UK. If you're in Dubai, you're on commission only. Um, and you have a manager, you're told what to do. You have to report in at nine and you leave at six. And they know your movements every minute of the day. So you're basically an employed robot. You are an employed robot. I would even go so far as to say, if I be bold, you are a telemarketer that's being paid to call somebody's leads and close them. And you take half the money. In fact, you don't take half the money in the UK at all. But no, in Dubai, you take 50 No, uh, employed, probably you'll get a basic of 20, 30 rand and, yeah. and 5 to 10% of the... Uh, so your potential is never really released, mm -hmm. it's unleashed. You see, and that to me is where I started, and I wish I'd known about the models. Yeah. I would actually say 90 to 95% of estate agents in the UK fall into that category, 90%. And do you think that's because people don't know about what else is out there, or it's just not a large part yet, you know, the other models? Well, of course, there's always the self-employed model, which is two varieties of that. I think moving forward, I think people's fear of, changing the existing model is really hard but again let's talk about that in greater detail let's be frank if you've got a mortgage and bills to pay for are you going to give that all up it all comes down to whether you believe in yourself or not i do and i have been broke don't get me wrong i have been very close to being out there with no money and in serious issues with my bank in dubai and i realized i had to do something different or there was no way out. And so I did do something different. I took action. I'll go into that in a little bit. But I wanted to come back to just tell you about the other models because you did ask me about mm -hmm. these models. So there's also the independent model. So that's your, um, you know, Remax or Fine and Country. I think you guys have Fine and Country in the UK. Yes, it's like you're buying a name. You, you buy the name across the door. They give you some guidance and support and it's your business, but they let you get on with it. Yeah, so you pr pretty much people look at it and say you're earning your 100% of your commission, but you then have to pay per transaction back. Yes. But now you really don't have engagement with others in the office you're on your own and I you know there's nothing worse than being lonely in any business like I think that's why a lot of people mm -hmm. are changing what they do these days so that leads me on to the third uh, and most excited models which is the interdependent model um, actually just like you know Keller Williams real estate so it's really where you take the best of both worlds and Gary Keller the founder has basically looked at how businesses were failing and tried to put it all together so you still have the office you still have leadership not management leadership which is very big difference you know they're there for your support and more than anything they're there to help you succeed and grow but they don't get in the way they don't tell you what to do and they do not micromanage you so instead of it being a boss with you looking down on your people what you're telling me is it's like you're the leader and you're looking up to your people guiding supporting them you working for them not them for you I mean look I was director of brokerage at Keller Williams for two and a half years in Dubai and my role was really to help people be more successful. So some people would say as the team leader, you're the director, you're the manager. I was never there to manage anyone. If they weren't going to get out of their seat and go hunt clients, I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't force them. I could only inspire them. So how did you do that? Because there's an awful lot of bosses out there in independent estate agency that have staff just wish that wish their staff would get off their backside and actually go and get the business themselves. How did you do that? I'll tell you how, because we actually um, interview very thoroughly our candidates and we really understand why they want to be in real estate. We're not about bums on seats. We're not about just the commission. In fact, um, we're not about the money. We're about being the best you can be. Okay, let's say someone goes through all that process but still fools you. How do you give them a kick up the backside? Okay, what so did you? give me some success stories to help the guys out there in the world. <laughs> well, I think the key to success is to understand that there are daily tasks that we should do as a realtor. So if we just sat at our desk looking at social media and pretending to make a few calls and not out and about looking at properties, you're not doing the daily tasks. Look, if you were in a Nokia phone factory and you were hired 
every day to put 300 phones together, that was your KPI of the day, you would do it, right? Because mm. you knew that you know that you'd be fired at the end of the week if you hadn't put 300 every single day together. Mm. But what happens when you're on commission only, self-employed, business owner in a real estate model? Nobody makes you do that anymore. But Lucy, there's plenty of people out there that are self-employed who've taken on this mantle, but for some reason don't go and get the business. How the hell do you motivate the unmotivated? Well, if, say, we made an error, obviously, and we had interviewed and brought someone into the team that wasn't motivated, and hopefully we haven't, but if we have, let's just say, we have a lot of ongoing training and coaching programs, so everybody has to write down their goals and commit to their goals and also commit to their daily tasks for themselves. Okay. What, what are, okay, but it's all about carrot and stick. What are the consequences if well, they don't do that? The consequences, they won't take money home, Chris, because they're on commission only, and they don't eat, and they can't pay their okay. bills. Okay. There is no okay. greater consequence than being on the street, surely. Okay, but... <laughs> That's how I look at it, because we're on commission only. So, Lucy, do you have any stories of where you've turned one of your poor performers into one of your best performers? What tips and advice did you, can you give us and the guys out there? Okay, so we have a 23-year-old who's been in real estate only six months, only six months. He was a fashion model. He found me on LinkedIn and he said, I want you to mentor me, Lucy. Show me how to be successful in real estate. So what did I do? I basically told him the secret to your success is being visible and getting through to your network every single day. So having 100 people, Chris, on day one, mm -hmm. someone should be able to show you a list of 100 contacts they're going to call or speak to about being in real estate. And if they can't show you that, you shouldn't even bring them into the industry. That's a really good day one exercise that I would do with anyone. Okay. The second thing is, you know, if you do not close in the next six weeks, where's your money coming from? And that gets them thinking, oh my goodness, I need to be doing these tasks. And through finding the area that he loves the most, you always must work on the area you love. So he chose off plan. I chose off plan, but before that I chose Palm Jumeirah because I love the Palm Jumeirah. And when you sell what you love, it's not selling. You love it. Does that make sense? Mm. So it's, I think a lot of agents are told what to do. So basically what you're telling me, Lucy, is, is you've got to work out what motivates the unmotivated, guide and support them and move them in the right direction. Yeah, it's the pain. You know, it's the pain game. When, when we interview people, we understand each person is a human being in front of us and we understand their story, where they've come, why they're here and where they want to go to. And when we're looking at goals together of what they want to achieve, not what we want to achieve. Do you think that's where people go wrong? Yeah. Too, most bosses are worried yeah. about what, what the, 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 the boss... The figures. Yeah. What, they, what the employee can do for them as opposed yeah. to what you can do for, for the employee. Absolutely, you've got it in one, in fact. That that's what it's all about. People just want the numbers from you. They don't care about you. They don't care about your families and your lives. We're the first people to say, you know, if your child is sick, then, you know, don't work for the next two or three weeks. Do what you've got to do because it's your life. You go to work mm -hmm. to live, you know, not the other way around. So that's, you know, I think, I think people have forgotten how to be human. And I think in real estate we are. <laughs>